Well, our 23rd film. <laughs> Time just passes really fast. Um, today, uh, I'm gonna tie one of my favorite flies. Um, all of us, almost all of us that fish a lot, we like black and green. And today I'm gonna do the fly called uh, Black Green Helmet. Uh, it's quite a little, it's a quite cute little story about this. Uh, actually, we it was on the on the Litsa, my favorite river in the world, and um, I've been written, writing this story many times. But I convinced my guy to go up the falls. You know, a river will fill up from top to bottom, not from bottom and and up. And uh, nobody thought it was fish up there. And a uh, long story short, I caught five good fish. Uh, all over 20 pounds uh, and um, super nice bright sea lice fish and they were caught on this fly and uh, coming back to camp there was one guy who said uh, did you use that black fly with a green helmet and since this fly didn't have a name it was turned out to be the black green helmet and um, this is a fly that I fish uh, in all sizes actually. This is like a medium or for most people maybe a big fly. It's about eight centimeters. I, I fish them down to micros too and even tinier than this and I fish them really big. It's one of these patterns that's really really good especially on a clear river on a cloudy day. And um, today I'm going to tie it on a TTT and you know our TTTs are turbo tungsten tubes they come in three sizes and um, same here with this pattern I tie them on on all of them uh, today I'm going to use the medium one uh, but I tie these also on our uh, BTTs if you want a really light fly uh, the BTT is better if you fish deep, the lighter fly is better than the heavy. The heavier fly is better in the faster water. I've talked about that before. So I'm going to tie this now and then I'm going to tie this loose body that goes with it. So uh, you can um, adjust and fish any size you want. And also you want the brighter green one, you can use a brighter green one and, and actually this what we call three wallet system where you can have one wallet with BTTs, one with TTTs and one with loose bodies and then you can change it's it's super effective it's a it's a way I really prefer to fish today okay enough talk let's start tying or maybe I could start by saying this first of course we have our packs Thank you all for, for uh, buying and subscribing for these. Uh, we pack them ourselves. Uh, either you have materials for 10 flies or you have six flies in different sizes uh, if you don't tie, if you like the pattern and but you don't tie. Or like many tires, you want to have a look and have something to look at when you tie. Okay, so let's start tying here now. So I picked the TTT, it's the Chartreuse fluorescent one and uh, I use with the TTT uh, our uh, extra small and I use a black one and I melt a little bit and I melt this a little bit to get a little edge on this like this just before I put the TTT on and you wait a few seconds and you can just take this and you can press it in and you can pull it down pull it down to the edge if you pull too hard and you're too fast you can pull the soft tubing through there but and then I put it on to the vise like that and black thread uh, I have to grease this a little of my nose. Can't grease it in my hair. I don't have any hair. Uh, okay, here we go. So, 
on the original uh, BGH black green helmet uh, I didn't have a, a green half gold but I've turned this over the years to be a little more green and on the big ones I use our ostrich ones our ostrich feathers you find them in our feather packs uh, the small ones <clears throat> but on this one now I'm gonna do a very soft fly today I'm gonna use a soft tackle a shot thrust one let's do this and when I pull away I don't take away too much of the really soft fibers I leave this and like with all hackles I tie it in in the tip and uh, this is what I want this for me is uh, too stiff with too little movement and too little volume Create a little triangle and tie in the triangle underneath. Double, meaning all fibers one side of the center by just holding back and tying that in. And I do it every turn. When I used to put the, the turns next to each other, not working too much to the front. And since the TTTs are quite big in diameter, even this long part is only going to be three turns. But being big in diameter also need, it means that we get quite a lot of volume to it. Tie it in and cut it off. Divide it a little bit. Move the thread back. And then I'm gonna start by taking a little bit of Angel Hair HD and I do it in our hottest green color, our Greenlander color. Oh, and this one is also the way that we have some really strong fluorescent fibers and they are in our mix. And when I pull this and cut this, I didn't get any. So what I do is I put an extra layer and pick a couple because I, I really like those fibers. Here we go. One and let's do one more. And it's easy. I can just uh, add these afterwards. It's just super simple. And double back. Make sure I Pull it down on the side so I get a wide spread flash, uh, like flash underwing, and I just taper here. I can cut and pull like this, um, looking so it's really spread. Then I take first wing, and the first wing is going to be green, and you can see how soft the material I use, and uh, make sure it's not too long. The problem if you put take a too long one is normally that you get too many straight fibers. I cut this off and always use the brush on all hair. Just brush it out and you can see this looks good. But after brushing it, it looks a million times better. Because what I do is that I untangle this. And I get a very wide and nice piece of hair that I can tie in flat on top. Looking so I get this not to be too long because I want this fly to taper. And I tie it in on the top, making sure I use half the diameter. A few more turns. You see better than I do. I always complain but light because when I tie normally I have best light possible here you are with the light I'm on the dark side of the moon here okay like that then I take angel hair and I'm gonna use our uh, other green one uh, which is called Cody green and it's got it's a little bit darker green um, and it mixes really nice, I think, with uh, together with the black. I'm going to 
put on later on. So I put this in and I double back. A little short there the ones I double back but it doesn't matter as long as I have fibers that comes all the way into the tip of the green. Okay, here we go. Time for the overwing and the main wing. She's black and I also use super soft material this time. Uh, and it doesn't really matter where it comes from. I get these questions all the time. Uh, the important thing is that it's soft. Soft enough to swim and soft enough for you to be able to create a good volume uh, of the wing. Brush it through and look at it. And if you look at this, you can see it's almost, almost straight. So I, what I do is that I take my fingers, put them up and then I taper. And I pull out some fibers to get a tip that is very narrow like that. Then I put it in. Looks so I get the right proportions, move it back a little bit so the black comes well behind the green. Use half the diameter of the tubing again, or the, the tube again. Sometimes it's not enough back uh, uh, down on the back side and I take my thumbnail and I just spread this so I get this nice wide profile and I tie it in looks good I think cut it and I cut just against the the TTT here make sure I don't have too much material sticking out in front okay like that looking good i think very wide nice uh, then i take a little bit more angular and i use the nasty rusty one this i was i made this color combo to uh, actually mix nice together with with peacock because I'm going to put a few peacock strands on top here. One or two strands, double back, make sure it's wide enough and tie it in. And again, check with your scissors so you don't have too many long ones. If there are a couple too long, I can cut them off afterwards. The good thing, not having angel hair behind the tip of the wing, here we have one too, is that they will tangle in the hook, even if you have some epoxy or some, some UV glue or whatever you keep in your hook, they uh, are the worst material to tangle. Okay, and then I do um, peacock. Actually, I have one lying here. You know, we have our peacock packs with all the colors. And uh, if you like peacock, this is... Uh, we found this source while we were sourcing materials for our PM packs and, and decided to actually take them in and sell them because they are so much better in quality than anything else I've seen. And uh, I use one here that is dyed green. I take a few, three to five, how many do we have? Five. Uh, and I spread them before I tie them in. And this can be little tricky but I try to spread them like this uh, and uh, if I'm a bit of lucky luck I look so I have them the same length and then I just hold them in on top move down my other fingers and tie all in at the same time sometimes one or two twists if they do I can just take them away but um, that look good to me. Well down on the sides too. Cut them off. And uh, my plan was in this little film to show you our new jungle cock. Maybe you can let they give me that or I'm gonna briefly show you what we are what's coming to you shortly.
briefly is like this. No, but there's a, there's a new pre-curved jungle cork coming up. I'm not going to show you. It's going to be secret. And uh, it's soon here and we will soon have it on our web too. And it's, um, it's uh, nicer than uh, what I think the other substitutes on the market, which are too stiff, meaning that it will affect the way the fly is swimming. We need to have them really soft and to look good too. Uh, I'm going to tie with a natural one today. And as I've done in all films, I'm going to show you my scientists so you know that we do things in the right way. Okay, I picked two feathers and normally I use smaller feathers than most, most people. And I use them a little bit longer than most. Always start with the one, oops, on my side. This is nicely curved, almost like our substitute, but I still don't want it flat like this. So I curve it a little bit. So it will follow the wing in a nice way. And I tie it in so I get the eye about middle of the fly. I'm gonna have one more hackle here, so I don't want this to be too short. Then it will, will disappear. Adjust it a little bit like that. Here we go. Do the same with the other one. Normally I just twist it the fly and have a look but since you are on that side and I can't move this vice and we get out of focus I have to do it like that and I look and see and it looks good pull this out a little bit before I cut it and uh, what I do now is I use a little bit of glue just make sure it's perfect before I put it on. And when you use glue, you have to be careful. Now I have a lot of soft fibers here. I don't want this glue to be sucked into the feathers. And I always use support either like this, finger to finger before I put it on, or I put my finger on to the vise and I put a little bit of glue on. And this actually, it's one thing you learn when you're guiding, it changes your fly from being this from being the weakest part to the strongest part of the fly if you get clients that aren't that good casters then the fly will be all over the bank and trees you will see what's left okay that's the way now i'm going to put on one more hackle and i'm going to put it around the wing and uh, i will use one of our pheasant rump feathers it's a nice material that is a bit like a shorter heron hackle. And I always tie in all these feathers in the tip. So I pull it off like this, create a little triangle and you can see I use support by my fingers when I cut so I don't cut it in the wrong place. And I tie it in a few turns and I move the thread down to the extra small tubing then I take this I can do it with a plier or I can do it by hand this was sometimes they are short but I'm gonna do this by hand and I double it same way as with the other hackle feather put on the turns here we go it's a little tricky this one put on the turns and make sure i move down come on now i move this down on the extra small doubling all the time and the softer it is the harder it is to double and also less expensive less important it is to double it because the fibers will go the right way here we go i need this anyway I need to pick this up because it broke for me there you go here we are come on now 
and I could show you our little plier here too. The good thing with the, our plier, I, I don't dare to talk about our last tools because they should have been here already, but they are not. But the good thing it's so heavy that you can leave the feather uh, without the thread in and it will still be in the right position. Okay, tie it in. Take this away. And then, uh, here we go. It should disappear too. Look at the fly. Let's see, so this hackle is even and it looks pretty nice and you can see how it turns into being like a little, almost like a little heron or spay hackles. Pretty nice, I think. And then it's time for a uh, turbo. And when it comes to cones, I don't know if you guys read Chasing Silver magazine, but I just wrote a piece. Uh, about uh, the Scandinavian tube fly development and um, when it comes to cones it's the diameter that decides the profile of the fly and here I don't need to have the big one or the medium one or the small one or, or which one I take the micro uh, I take the micro one because I have the TTT or the BTT behind. I slide it down a little bit and um, put a little glue and again put it away from the thread so I can take this and move the glue with the thread. Make sure it's fastened and then take the fly out of the vise. Then I just pull down the cone and it's easy to do it out of the vise. And I pull it down tight, make sure it's tight, tight, tight. Take it away, cut two mil, or this time it's three, two or three, it doesn't really matter. Hold it up and melt it down and uh, by holding it this way like the guy with the apple I used to say Newton found out things want to go that way so holding it like this the tubing uh, might not have a hole holding it like this it opens up like a little flower okay so ready did it turn out nice look how wide it is soft materials good taper if i have one or two too long angel hairs i take them away here now looking good sometimes when i tie flies uh, like this uh, uh, with a camera or an audience I think to myself I'm not gonna fish this this is a giveaway but this time it turned out really nice <sighs> nice taper and uh, this will swim like a dream okay so let's tie a body now because the way I fish these is with the loose body sometimes I only use our our fits tubing if I want to fly that is really translucent I just use a piece of tubing but sometimes I want to fly with a bit more uh, volume to it I keep dressed bodies and I have them in my my wallet uh, uh, my body wallet where I have how many hundreds of different kinds and then I can I can um, switch between a black one or a green one or uh, what I'm gonna do now for you is the original body okay so uh, either you can tie this on a black tube or you can tie it on the chartreuse fluorescent one I'm gonna tie on the chartreuse today it adds a little extra fluorescent and um, which I really like and uh, then I combine it with the black 
extra small and the reason for that is that I use a cone that is fluorescent to get uh, as much contrast as possible which I think is good okay and I take a piece of this and uh, I will do the same as I've done before I cut a little angle on the medium one before I put it in the vise and uh, put on the extra small you can put them inside each other before you put them on but it's really easy to do this you put it on and you just slide up the green one so you see that they are actually the black is actually in the green quite a bit and the reason that I tie that I cut this is an, at an angle is that because when I put this thread on the medium will hold the extra small. I said it a million times, but maybe there's some people here that haven't seen the other films. I mo move my thread back and uh, I take a mirage tinsel, tie it in underneath, and I don't back down the black thread, I back down the mirage. So I don't get the black thread under the mirage. And Oh, this was a bit short but it works stretch it a little bit and tie it in and I secure everything underneath it doesn't matter that much but um, it's a habit and one that comes from hiding uh, the point where you tie in materials uh, actually especially on complicated flies now I'm going to use two of our hollow braids and I think this is the two ones we sell most of, isn't that right Ludde? Ludde is filming? Yeah. Yeah, it's the Alta Gold and the Sea Light Silver and of course silver and gold ribbing and bodies is um, popular and on a lot of flies. So I'm going to have the gold one as a ribbing, meaning I tie that in first. And then I'm going to do uh, the silver as a body. Sometimes if I tie this fly in a classic version, I also use uh, a tail. And then I use a hot uh, chartreuse fluorescent tail. But on the ones I use on a BTT or a TTT, I don't want that because I, do, I don't want them to be able to turn and fish the opposite way. So here I start by just building up this body and I do it uh, with a silver one. If you want you can do this also if you want a brighter one you can also do this with uh, one of our green braids like the hot Greenlander one it's a really strong uh, green color but uh, here uh, I do it as in the original one with gold. Uh, okay, dubbing, glitz, long fibered synthetic dubbing, easy to dub on and make sure to uh, make this uh, body quite big. And the thing is if you don't overdress it now uh, you brush it and it's going to look too skinny. And the thing with brushing out dubbing, I, I really don't understand why you put dubbing on if you don't brush it, because what you want is that you want that translucent fat body. And I put this on and I save just a few mils here, uh, where I can tie in my hackle and I'm going to put on a, a regular Cox hackle and I'm going to use a black one and uh, just tie it in in the front again underneath I didn't say but I used the 12 -0, uh our 12 SSS thread the black one today and Normally there are five turns of, of hackle and the way I do it is that I hackle one way and I rip the other way, meaning I turn them the same round 
but one going that way, one that way, meaning they cross over and it turns out to be a really strong fly. But I always start by putting one extra turn in the front. And the reason for that is that otherwise there's not going to be any fibers uh, right in the uh, up close to the head of the fly and I want that. Take this and I use the same material and this is the good thing with our SSS braid is that you can spin it down to any size, almost any size you want. And I cross over. Cross over every turn and pull it down really hard into the ribbing, into the dubbing, sorry. Uh, and tie it in. Take this little thing away here. And I normally do this that I take this and I fold it back so it can't slip. Just a few turns of thread, cut it off and I brush it the meanest brush on the market and uh, I brush it before I put the cone on because if I've done wrong or if I think it's uh, doesn't look good enough then I can just redo it before I put my cone on looking at that couple of turns uh, and uh, find a little turbo here and here actually what you can do, you can use either brass or, or tungsten and you can use any color because this is not going to be seen. Take a little bit of uh, glue, put the glue a little bit away from the thread. This is a good trick. I think here it's not so much sensible materials, but you can hold back and you pick up the glue. And then you take the cone and like the, here it's some extra glue, I turn it like this when I pull it on, meaning I spread the glue. So I take this and I turn it on, meaning I get glue all over, take the thread away, press it down, take it out of the vise, and I cut this, and on the small one I only need about two millimeters. And then the important thing, a black and green fly, you need to have a black and green lighter, right? And I just, if it works, here we go. Oh, it's losing, losing gas, this one. So, just throw it away. It won't work. Do I have another one? Can you tie a black and green fly with an orange lighter? Okay. Melt it, make sure you have a hold. If you hold it up, it will open up. Fits tubing is good that way. And then I just look at this body and see if I have a few of these that's too long and maybe a little curled. I just take them away. And I just made a little body. And I have those in different colors, of course, but also in different length. Because what I want is that I want the body to put the hook in the middle of the ply. The salmon will take from the side, not from the back. If, it, if it, they come here and they pull this, meaning I think it means that you fish it too slow. Fish it sideways, make them take it from the side. The hook is best in the middle. Okay, so our body and our fly and I get questions on how you attach it and it's super easy you just slide the fly or the TTT or the BTT on to the, to the leader you take the body slide it on and then you take your and you tie your hook on and then because of the flexibility in the fits tubing you then attach the hook into the tubing and this will slide down there and it will oh sorry it will fish like this and the good thing with this is that 
if I on a bright day or, or on a really clean, uh, clear river, the sun will pop out. I can take this away and can fish a green one on the same. Uh, or uh, if there's uh, heavy rain or you get less light, I can put on one with more hackle or even a bit of ostrich uh, here and add volume to the same fly. It keeps me being very, very flexible on the river, which is something that I like. Otherwise you look in your boxes and you think, where's that fly I want? Why didn't I tie that? Why didn't I do this? Okay. The black fly with the green helmet, the black green helmet. And um, I hope you liked, I hope you liked the fly and uh, I hope you liked watching me tie this and I hope that you will tie them, fish them and catch a lot of fish on them. And as I normally say, next time in a month, we're going to tie something very different and I'm not going to. Uh, tell you I normally don't tell you what it is, but it's going to be an underestimated spring fly that can be super effective for those big silvery fish entering rivers really really early Okay Thank you for watching black green helmet and stay strong tie on Uh, right here up in the Litsa Hall.